Hey guys, Strong Style Studios back again. It's Alex. And it's me, Noah. And we are your co Strong Style Studios champion until further notice. And uh, that's right. You better not hold on that belt. <laughs> uh, we're here with another episode of Running the Ropes. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. A um, lot going on in the world of wrestling. It sure is. Uh, we got WWE news with the latest angles going on into Survivor Series. Uh, we have TNA news, including a world title storyline that might actually be good. Um, world title controversy in ROH as well. Uh, more WN Live and PWG. Alright. We always finish with the good. We always, we, well, you know, start pretty okay with that WWE, go through TNA, and then we, you know, get steadily better. Mm -hmm. That's just the way we roll. Alright, well, let's start with WWE, which they had um, Raw last night, which was described as um, a reset button. For right. last night, you mean five days ago. Whatever, five days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Timelines. <laughs> what else? Whatever. Um, so yeah, we had um, quite a few things going on in WWE uh, last or Monday, uh, including Damian Sandow cashing in on John Cena and having probably the best match of his career so I'd far. I'd say yeah, pretty pretty obviously. Yep. And um, completely pissing off all the IWC. Yeah, that makes sense. You know. Sure. Okay. Um, well, I want to get my opinions on this. My opinion is this: one, it was a good match. That match did more for Sandow than anything he's done since winning the Money in the Bank case. Yeah. I mean, besides the one match... With that him, might have done more for him than uh, anything that yeah. he's ever done. Besides the uh, the brief... Besides the match with Cody Rhodes he had at, at SummerSlam, which we, yeah. we loved. Yeah, that was a great match. There was nothing else he really did. He, he just lost. He was on pre-shows, even. Yeah, he, um, was, he was not treated well no. as, a, as a Money in the Bank holder. So, if he had won, he would have just been another guy who got lucky... And would have been a cowardly heel champion. Who basically would have just waited for him to lose it. Exactly. It would have been much like when, um, like Edge won the first Edge won it the first time. Although he did, yeah, he didn't hold that for long at all. No. Uh, it, would, it would have been stupid. And so, uh, I understand people are upset because, oh well, John Cena, the one arm Cena, could still beat Damian Sandow, and it's just like, I'd, I'd rather have Sandow lose and have a great match then win and then hold the belt for a month and then lose it right back to Cena. Sure. So Now, for me, here's where my problem is. Okay. Now, like you said, I don't have a problem with Sandow losing that match the night he did. If he would have won, I would have been like, oh, what? Here we go again. Exactly. But the problem I had was that Cena's been out hurt. His first night back, he comes back and wins the world title. And his second night back, he comes out and he beats the Money in the Bank holder. I mean, why? I, I just don't see why Cena would need that kind of a bump mm -hmm. right now. I mean, he just comes in and boom, boom. Like, Super Cena's back. Like, they just jam him right back down your throat. And I just don't feel like that's good for Cena, for one. Mm -hmm. I think that that's just going to turn people on him even more. Um, I just felt it was rushed, that's yeah. all. I, I don't have a problem with the match and stuff, it just was rushed. I think it would have been a really good idea, it would have made sense for Sandow being the, the genius he is, is if he just kept attacking Cena every single night. Like, keep injuring that arm. And then eventually, like, I'm cashing in at Survivor Series, it's going to be you and me, and Cena's going in like with a badly injured arm. And that way, Sandow won on pay-per-view in, in a main event. And it makes, like, you know, you wonder, like, oh, Cena's been go being hurt the whole time, like, is he going to be able to win? Right. That would have been a lot better, I think. I think so, too. And I think that I could have stomached a, the loss for Sandow a little bit more yeah. in, in that situation. Not that it wasn't... I, I expected him to lose, yeah. to be honest. And he, he, he deserved to win. I mean, like, that... that or lose. That win would have done nothing for him. It just would have been, oh, here comes another mid card holding yeah. the champion. You know, so... I just... Yeah. I, hope, I just felt like it was just too quick. Yeah. Hopefully they, they keep this idea of him as a main eventer around. Apparently he's been praised backstage a lot for that match, so... Hopefully that gets him some attention. Um, we also had probably the, the segment of the night I probably would say would be um, uh, Shawn Michaels and Daniel Bryan's segment. Oh yeah, that was a mark out moment. That was a wonderful segment. Um, what happened was Shawn Michaels came into the ring, calls out Daniel Bryan. This was all in the first hour too. Yeah. They really pumped that hour full. Um, Trying to get everyone away from the World Series game, I guess. I guess so. And um, so Punk, er, Michaels is in the ring talking to uh, Daniel Bryan and basically says to Daniel Bryan, hey, Sorry, but Triple H is my best friend. He's been my friend for years. Uh, I overreacted, blah, blah, blah. Shake my hand, you know. I apologize. Daniel Bryan wouldn't do it. Daniel Bryan had a great pissed off expression. Yeah. And um, so he like he reluctantly shakes Michael's hand after Michael's kind of like, you know, calls him ungrateful and everything. 
which is kind of nice to heal Shawn Michaels. A little bit, yeah, yeah to come out. Um, so he shakes his hand, puts him in the yes lock, and the whole place goes crazy. Shawn Michaels taps out. Yeah. What a moment. Okay, first of all, let me point out two things. One, Shawn Michaels tapped out. That's huge. Okay, now, yeah, he's not a wrestler, but still. And, and it's not a match, but whatever. And two, here's something that you got to think about. When was the last time Shawn Michaels got hit, attacked by someone, and the person wasn't booed for it? Right, that's the thing. That is, like, I mean... Face reaction yeah. was crazy. Like, remember, like, WrestleMania 23, when Shawn Michaels, like, all week was super kicking Cena, in the, or in, leading up to that show, and was still getting cheered like crazy. Oh, yeah, and I remember after that show, after Cena won, the crowd was pissed. Yeah. Like, most of the people were not pleased about that finish. Yeah, and now, granted, Cena, but, like, you know, even other guys, like Jericho... You know, couldn't get a face, couldn't get, can't get a face reaction when he attacks. Uh, but just, I've never seen a face attack Michaels and get a good reaction out of the crowd from it. Daniel Bryan did. That's crazy. Yeah, that was that was wild. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, and so that was awesome. And love uh, that segment. Yeah, that was that was. The, I'm just like watching like that's the birth of pissed off Bryan. And mm -hmm. that's definitely like that right there. I'm like, okay, he still got a chance. There's still some potential for this guy to be the biggest star in the company. Maybe not the biggest, but one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. Let's not go crazy here. Right. Um, and then we had uh, him, which you point out that you didn't like this, but we're going to... Um, he was in the back, and he was attacked by the Wyatt family, which was kind of cool because I'm like, okay, Wyatt's and Dana Bryan in a feud. I like that idea. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. However, you had a really good point, and I, I like to make that. Well, the thing is that this happened, the attack happened directly after the segment that we liked so much. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was too soon. Um, it took away from what, that great segment because when you look back on this Raw, you're going to remember, Are you when you think of Daniel Bryan, what are you going to remember? You're going to remember him getting attacked. And that's the, that's the clip they're going to show. It's okay. him getting attacked by the Wyatts. And I felt like that overshadowed such a great segment. Not that the, the attacking was bad, but the, the timing. I think you could... You have how many weeks till Survivor Series? This could have waited till yeah. next week. I mean, it was I too soon. I don't know if I, it's an overshadow, but definitely like cast a little bit of a dark cloud over the moment. And by that, I don't mean like it, because I'm going to remember that. But yeah. most people are going to remember from this Raw what happened was Daniel Bryan got attacked. Yeah. Okay. And I wish that that wasn't the case. Yeah. And the, yeah, I, I agree. They could have waited till next week on Raw. It would have been, been made no problem. Especially when they. Attacks Punk in the same way. Yeah, way. exactly. Which uh, we'll get Seems unnecessary. Yeah, uh, so yeah, CM Punk wrapping up his feud with Ryback by beating him in a street fight. Thank God Just it's over. It was basically like a Punk squat, and he beat the fuck out of Ryback. Good. And then he did the one thing you never, ever have a monster do. He tapped out. Yeah, it's, um, it's Ryback, it's, like, it's over. Done. Yep, uh, and apparently, like, even backstage, Ryback's like, just like, they're like, looking at Ryback, like, why aren't you getting better? And, uh... Yeah, so I think the Ryback push is done. Um, they're keeping Heyman off television for a while until Lesnar's return, which I'm grateful for. Although I, I would love to see Heyman on Raw more. Heyman, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna miss Heyman, but he does not deserve to be stuck with Ryback or Axel or Axel, who you know, I, I just don't get why people like that dude. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I, yeah, and, um, yeah. So goodbye, Ryback. Enjoy NXT, hopefully, or future endeavors. Really. Uh, yeah, but CM Punk then he got attacked by the Wyatt family, which I think is leading to a Wyatt family and one other person versus Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, and two other guys at Survivor Series, which would be a really cool match. And we've been saying forever, like ever since the Wyatt family debuted, like they need a real feud. They need a feud to sink their teeth into. And this is one that I think can do it because the Daniel Bryan Punk, two of the most over guys in the WWE right now, two of the best mic workers, so them and Bray Wyatt and promos are going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and like the word is that this might be the main event of the show for Survivor Series, which I'd be really okay with. And uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a really cool match to see, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I think it'll be a good match. The only thing is I'm concerned is that I guess that, that they'd be moving Brian away from the title picture, which would pretty much say that like this last three months really only served to bash Brian. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I do have a feeling that like. Daniel Bryan will be walking into WrestleMania as the champion, or will be walking out the champion. So that's something to look look yeah. at. But it, it, if it, it's if it is a but to be honest with you, I really would like the whole Orton Bryan thing to be over. I'm tired yeah. of watching them wrestle. I'm tired of watching them have you know those dusty finishes. <clears throat> just 
really sick of that storyline. I felt like they did a terrible job. They had big show in it way too much. It just needs to end, please. Well, good news for you then, because the Survivor Series, the main event for Survivor Series is looking to be Randy Orton faces the big show. Oh, God. I don't know what's worse. <laughs> why? Why? I don't understand how WWE can look at Big Show and think, that's a guy people are going to pay to see. He gets reaction out of people for whatever fucking reason still. Ugh. I don't know. Uh, like, you know, please. I get, I get that, like, people like him because, oh, yay, it's the Big Show, but it's like, it's still, it's like, he's an attraction. He's not a main eventer. Yeah. yeah. Especially at this point in his career. No. You know, well, whatever. It's, it's, it, it's as long as it's not the main event, I won't have too much of a problem with it. But just, uh, ugh, you know, uh, yeah, it's just it's a, it's an ugh moment. Yes, definitely. Um, oh, and also one other thing is that they're uh, teasing the Shield breakup, which uh, looks like the the word on the street is is that like this might lead to Roman Reigns being like a big baby face and going up against the Shield or something like that. Which I'd be okay with. I think Roman Reigns has that in him. Um, although I I thought he was one of the more natural heels of the group. Just, um. Yeah, I think that, I thought, you know, Seth Rollins was a more natural face, but he can pull off the heel. Oh, thing. he can pull off the heel. Um, I think that the crowd would want to get behind Roman Reigns. He's got the look. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with this. I'm a little disappointed because I think that uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns as a tag team had legs. But, you know, I'm not going to be too upset if they no. split up. I hey, think that he... eventually something, some sort of development needed to happen. Yeah, the and they've been around for a year, and, like, I mean... Uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns were tag team champions from like April to well, they went in May till like just last right. month. So that's, that's long time to be champion right there. So and um, you know I'd be okay with the Shield breaking up. It's been around they've been around for a year. It's like you know time for these guys to kind of go their own way. Yeah. Um, I heard one person recommend like what if they did like a uh, like a match down the road of these guys in a three way uh, feud or whatever. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, Tyler Black and Ambrose, I don't think, ever had a match in the Indies. They had a few in NXT, though, or FCWs, which were fantastic, actually. Yeah. So, I'd be okay with that. But, uh, yeah, and I also want to point out, like, just how funny it is that so many people were, when the Shield debut, just, like, instantly blew it off, like, oh, they're just going to get buried, you know? They're going to be wasted and blah, 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 and we're here a year later, and they're still on top of the game. Yeah. So, ye of little faith, you know. Is there anything else from Doug Pumdup Raw to talk about? Uh, Kane? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Kane, oh, yeah, we forgot to mention he returned in Hell in a Cell. Oh, well. You know what else we meant, forgot to mention at Hell, Hell in a Cell was something that really bothered me, but we can touch on that in, in a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so Kane returned to Hell in a Cell, and he shows up tonight and chokes Lance Miz, and, or he chokes him in Hell in a Cell, and then had a squash match, which the best part of the whole match was that Kane walking out there, and JBL's just like, well, Kane's about to destroy the Miz, and Cole's like, Oh, Miz is a former WWE champion. I mean, if that could be a walk in the park, and then like two minutes later, well, I guess it was a walk in the park. <laughs> yeah. and he's just like, God damn. Uh, so yeah, um, Kane calls out Stephanie. Stephanie walks out, and Kane basically says, uh, "I'm your monster now. I'm your bitch." And walks up the ramp, takes the mask off, hands to Stephanie, and walks away. Go ahead, Noah. I hated it. <laughs> Let me say that I thought that this was really stupid. I thought that. Kane coming back was like a ready-made storyline. He hit, he could either hate the Wyatts for hit, beating him up and taking him and, I don't know, dumping him wherever, or they could have accepted him into the family and Kane could have found a place that he finally felt home, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they could have, you, he could have been part of the family and then eventually they could have broken away yeah, from that. Yeah, like, you know, someone trying to, like, Daniel Bryan feuding with the wise guy, yeah. trying to reach Kane to get him to turn back. D Daniel Bryan, Taker, anybody that you, yeah. Yeah, you can think of. Yeah, that, Taker that and Bray Wyatt. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, I hated it, for one, because it didn't make sense. Why is Kane come back and all of a sudden, okay, since I got beat up and have been gone for a while, I'm just going to be your corporate bitch. It didn't make sense to me. Yeah. I thought it was a complete waste. Yeah, and um, now I have I, I told you this, but I thought like, well, maybe the Wyatts are working for the McMahon family, and like that's what like that's why Kane's joining the McMahon family, or whatever. But you point out like that. I, I and I agree. Like it'd be kind of stupid to have the Wyatts joining the McMahon family. It just wouldn't make sense for their right. characters. Yeah, I just don't think that would make sense at all for their um, the gimmick. How they're they're trying to basically they see. Uh, all these major superstars is like uh, false idols. False idols, exactly. Yeah. And so I just it, it wouldn't make sense yeah. to me. I don't and, and, the, and the whole yeah. thing is like kind of like you know stop 
believe in the lies and like don't trust the, the don't trust the powers that be and like you know like well that's that's the big man yeah like, so i really hope they don't go down that road that yeah would be really i really hope it's just the wives are just going after these after punk and brian because like like i said they're false idols and like you know people worship you guys and like we're going to show you that you're mortal or whatever or something yeah like, something like I, that that would make more sense but whatever it, it's a wait and see type of thing for me it's like you know this could be good this could be stupid but whatever and the, apparently the reason they unmasked him is because they got that See no yeah, evil two serum and out. Which, that's coming out. Yeah, whoop do you fucking do? Anyway, uh, anything else from Raw? Uh, not from Raw, but I don't want to move away from WWE okay. just yet. I just want to touch on one thing because we forgot to say it in our Hell in a Cell review, and uh, it was a big moment should have happened there was the return of Rey Mysterio. <laughs> You're right. I completely forgot about that yeah, too. Yeah, I think most people probably. Do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, during the pre-show, they mentioned that Rey Mysterio is over there on the Spanish announce table. I'm like, sure enough, there he is talking to the Spanish announce people. And how long has he been gone? He's been gone for like a, a like, fucking year yeah, almost. Yeah, like forever. So he's just like, just like, oh yeah, hey, there's Rey Mysterio, and he just sits there all night and never, nothing ever happens. Nothing. Not a single thing. Doesn't they, get in Del Rio's face. They didn't even like have him say anything that the English audience could. Yeah. So I was like, I was kind of like, why would they do that? And like, it's not like it's Rey Mysterio. They're in Miami. It's not like they're in like, uh, he's from San Antonio, right? Or, uh, no, he's from El Paso. California. Yeah, no, he's from, from California. No, you're right. He is from California. You're right. So like, it's like it makes like, why the hell is he in California? Like, if it was his hometown, I understand like having the hometown hero back. But it's like, why the hell is he just showing up in Miami for that? That might be the worst return. Yeah, I've ever I, seen. I, I think it was just more like a one night thing. But again, like, why the hell would he show up just randomly? At, for a pay-per-view that's yeah. not even, you know, like, why? It just seemed like such a waste. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see Ray Mysterio with his back for one more run, just to have sure. her, just come back, wrestle for a few months, and then retire, please, Ray. You're, you're, you know, your body just is not cooperating the way it should be, man. Yeah. I mean, geez, how how yeah, how many surgeries has he had over the past, like, five oh, years? it's been quite a few. No kidding, man. Just, you know, retire and, you know, go go enjoy yourself. Make it, open a wrestling school. That's what everyone else does. Yeah, really. Um, all right, well, let's switch over to TNA, which, um, we're coming off their <sighs> biggest pay-per-view of the year, the big thing was uh, AJ Styles as the world champion, which uh, led to the very next TV show on Thursday having a Bound for Glory rematch. The main event of Bound for Glory was re put on free television the very next show, which you don't see WWE ever do at WrestleMania. Mm. I honestly can't remember the last time that happened. No, they usually they stretch that out to backlash. Yeah, at least, so. but you know, at least it's another pay-per-view and usually build a match. But right. Anyway, yeah, so, the, oh, well, first of all, let's talk about that impact where um, Anderson returned, and they had, like, a 45-minute opening promo again. Oh, my God. They do that every single year. After, look, t look back from the years. Every single Bound for Glory, the next show, they have, like, a 45-minute opening promo. And the, it, this is a two-hour show. We're not talking about Raw. No. We're talking about a two-hour show. Even Raw. Like, if there's a 45-minute promo on Raw, I'd call bullshit. Yeah, that's too long. Oh, shit. No kidding. But Anderson returned. And then uh, Angle talked about being hurt. Him and Rude continued their feud. That was about it. I don't remember anything from TNA Impact. It was just so uneventful. Um, the main event happened with AJ versus Bully Ray. And they probably had a better match than they had the whole show for Bound for Glory. And then they had a worse finish. So it was like, he kind of evened out. Yeah, really. Um, and then AJ calls up Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter comes out and uh, AJ walks away from the company. And apparently they're doing the CM Punk storyline, which, you know, I think everyone's all calling, but they're actually doing it better than WWE. Shocking, right? Yeah, really. It was badly, more badly built up, but this they're actually using it smartly because he's uh, AJ will be going to AAA and Wrestle 1, um, both of which are in a count agreement, I guess the word is, yep. with TNA. And his match for AAA, I believe, is this Sunday against Judas Macias. Yeah, I don't know what it's Which is whatever. I don't know what he's called in Mexico. I don't think he's called Judas Macias in Mexico. I don't think so, but... Whatever. Um, that will be available online for free. Okay. Um, so people can check that out, which is cool. I mean, yeah. I'm not a big fan of Judas Macias by any stretch of the imagination. But it'd be interesting to see what they do with the whole AJ being in right. Mexico thing. And I hope that... I'm sure that if you look... Online, you'll be able to find the Wrestle One yeah. show um, too. We, so. he, we remember him who he's wrestling. We, we saw the name, but we neither one of us recognized the name. No, so never heard of him. Uh, I'm sure he'll be fine though. Talent. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's like this is the one thing that everyone had a problem with the WWE storyline with CM Punk them not doing was uh, not having Punk go to like the local indies and wrestle. Yeah, I really, I still have my fingers crossed that 
AJ might go to like PWG or something. Or ROH. Even OVW would be yeah. cool. But. Yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. But yeah, again, like it, the reason he's going to these two is because they have agreements with TNA. So yeah, but, but it's still cool. You never know. Like it probably make more sense for PWG because um, they've had talent there wrestle before, and like they're not a, a DVD company or a, or a IP view company yeah. or television, so it make more sense. Sure. But we'll see. And we'll keep you updated on that. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that TNA is actually taking advantage of this storyline. Yeah, I agree. Shocking. Um, well, there's been a big change in the landscape of TNA, which mainly involves Hulk Hogan apparently is gone. And also... Eric Bischoff is on his way out the door. The reign of terror is over, folks. Thank God. We've had to suffer for for three years now. Oh, it and, seems like so much longer. Yep, and it's nearly over. And uh, TNA may be getting their feet back under their back under them. Uh, they're heading back to Orlando for to do Impact off off the road, which uh, apparently a lot of the guys in the roster are happy about because on the road was not working for them. It really wasn't. Um, they're doing this new thing, which is like a twenty four seven thing, which is um, they're encouraging um, wrestlers to like film promos or videos at home or on the road or whatever, and send them to the office and they'll put them on their YouTube page, which is smart. And I wish more independent companies would do that. I, like Ring of Honor. Bring has been picking up a little bit, but like they are just, they should be like cranking they those should things be their out. Number one, yeah, you know, and uh, you know, it's something that WWE kind of like, you know, they use the YouTube quite a bit nowadays, but uh, you know, it's just it's something that like every wrestling company should do because you know, so much of wrestling fans are on the internet, and that's how they watch wrestling. So yeah. you put stuff on the internet, wrestling fans will find it. So that's smart, and apparently that was that was an idea originally pitched back in two thousand nine, but was shot down as soon as Hogan and Bischoff walked in the door because. They wanted to focus all of their efforts on television and trying to go against the WWE. Dumb decision. Clearly, it didn't work. Yeah, it, yeah, clearly it did not work. So, oh, and uh, forgot to mention this with the WWE, but we'll mention here. Um, Hogan is talking about getting back into shape to try to get back into WWE. Good luck there, Hogan. Yeah. Stay the fuck away, please. Really, please just go away for good. Just, 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 just go. go Go swing on your fucking wrecking ball and do those stupid fucking videos you've been doing with your daughter and, you know, stay the fuck away from wrestling, please. Please. You've, you've already destroyed your legacy. And you're, yeah, it's gone. It's, it's gone. dead and gone. Yeah. Um, and this also looks like TNA may be looking for a new owner. Yeah. yeah. Um, this has been, like, very much, like... like hush, hush. Yeah, like, like so they're, they're denying it. Other people are reporting that it's true. Who the fuck knows? But apparently there's... Uh, TNA's been looking for someone to buy the company for a few months now, well, for a while now, yeah. once they realize that it's not going to make money, it's not going to profit. No, it's not making a profit. Um, so they're looking for someone to buy it. And it's not a public thing, but it's more of a, a private thing. Yeah. A few a few buyers have come and gone to the office, TNA mm -hmm. offices, looking and trying to figure out a deal. So we could be seeing some seriously major changes. Yeah. In TNA soon. Which uh, we've been saying for a while they need to do. And uh, yeah. thank God they're finally getting their their act together, you know. And maybe and they're apparently they're talking about bringing back in some old talent they had to let go because of budget cuts. So maybe TNA will survive. Maybe we'll actually pay attention to TNA. Probably not, but you never know. Right. Um, yeah, but that's crazy. And um, do you want do you want to talk about like the idea of who we had for who we thought would be like the best guy to help TNA? Or is that thing? I mean, we can mention. Okay. Um, we both kind of agree that the best guy to, well, first of all, the best guy that the TNA should have got was Paul Heyman. Yeah. Paul Heyman was, would, have been, would have saved TNA. Yeah, they should have done that years ago, and it's just proof positive over the years that that's where they should have went. Yeah, but. because Heyman had the right idea. Uh, but we think you know, maybe Gage Sapolsky would be a good choice for... Uh, yeah, they need a, a mind like that. They need someone who's, you, who's used to like the, the younger talents. Yeah. Someone who's been in the trenches and knows about wrestling. Yeah. And I think Sapolsky's a guy that would definitely fit in there. He, and like, I think you told me, he, he, this would be a great place for him because he could focus only on the booking. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, TV production, production, stream, uh, ticket sales, yeah. streams, you know, advertising venues. Yeah. You know, yeah. He needs to focus. Because get this guy in there and focus him on booking, I think that this yeah. company would really turn it. Because we, we, we do give Gabe a lot of shit. A lot of people on the internet do. But when it comes right down to it, Gabe does know wrestling. He, yeah. You know, I'll give him that. Yeah. He knows wrestling. He knows his guys. He knows what's good. And so I think if you give him a full team working under him, you'll see him come back to like the Gabe we used to know from ROH. I agree. I think so but, too. Will it happen? Who knows? But, and like, also, one thing I want to mention to you is that, like, we were talking about, like, you know, how Tina has, like, these guys who used to be big names in the Indies, but, like, 
think about it, like all the guys they have in the company right now were big names back in like 2005, 2006, whatever, in the Indies. And now they're still there in TNA and they're like not, they haven't really raised in any. Yeah, I think you that know? you you made a great point when you said that you look at the roster and it's been basically the same roster for 10 years. Yeah. And everyone who was on the roster back then is pretty much in the same position they were back then. Yeah. AJ Styles is still not like the, the top guy. No. You know, you can make an argument maybe he is now, but it's like, this is the guy who's been in the company since day one. How the fuck is he not the number one guy in the company? Right. You know? Right. And you look at Chris Saban or Samoa Joe, guys who were taken from the indies and were big names there, and they've never really risen the ranks and stayed there. No. And the thing is about AJ that's crazy is that he was Mr. TNA. He was the reason. When they were on Fox Sports Net, remember when they were on there? I didn't watch it back then. Well, they used to be on there for like a half hour a day. Yeah. And he was the reason to tune in. That's the only reason anybody knew about TNA was because yeah. because of AJ Styles. Yeah. And they did nothing with that. No, they 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 treated they got like shit his whole career. And like I'm like I was thinking about this now. It's like who's like the who are the young guys that are gonna step up in TNA right now? Like probably the only one is Magnus, and he's been in the company since like 2008. Right. It's so like he's not a, a newbie to TNA. He's Heck been there no. for a while. He's gotten a lot better, you know. Yeah, he's improved for sure. But it's just like you know. You got these guys who are like in their 30s, and you have no 20 year olds to pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can shit on WWE all you want, but they have enough talent right now to cover their main event spots for the next 10 years, probably. And they understand, they they realized they needed younger talent, and they went on God. And that's one thing that TNA never understood. They kept thinking that they needed these old established names. Well, now you got all these old established names. And guess what? It's not 2004 anymore. And guess what? They're, they're either overpaid or aren't working out. Right. So, you get what you paid for. So, hopefully they fix that quickly. Um, all right, well, let's switch over to ROH, which uh, the big storyline right there now is um, coming out of Glory by Honor, which is a show we did not attend. And I'm actually looking forward to watching because I heard it was pretty good. You're not going to watch it? Mm -hmm. No. Um, well, Jay Briscoe finally returned to ROH to be medically cleared, which we're happy to see him back. Yep, good to have him back. And came back with his own custom ROH title, which looks awesome, yeah, by the way. it looks so good. <laughs> That's, and also... How fitting! It's pretty awesome that the, that Jay Briscoe, the guy who's been there since day one, gets his own custom belt. Yeah, he that's that's it. very deserving. Yeah, and that's really cool that they did that for him. Um, so yeah, he's coming to be the, R, the real ROH champion now, and um, actually coming up soon this week, this Saturday actually, um, will be a show in Cincinnati. But Adam Cole will not be able to compete due to concussion. So Jay Briscoe's like, well, heck, I'm the ROH champion still. Why not I be in the place Adam Cole? So it's going to be uh, Jay Briscoe versus Kevin Steen in Cincinnati, which should be a great match. Yeah, I love this idea um, because Jay never lost the title. This is a great way to play into the fact that, hey, if your champion's not going to fight, I will. Yeah, and it's almost like, did they plan this? You know, right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. too good to be true. Yeah, exactly. So, but this is really, really smart done, and like I think this is going to really do a good job of like covering their ass with the whole... Jay Briscoe was stripped of the title thing. Yeah, this will actually help a lot. I think so. And, uh, well, right now, the, currently, the main event for Final Battle is Elgin versus Adam Cole for the Arbitrage World title. But it, there's no chance in hell that Jay Briscoe's not going to be added to that match. Yeah, I really, I definitely see him being added. And uh, we'll be really looking forward to that match. I think that'd be good. Because I think all, I don't know, Jay Briscoe and Elgin have never had a match before, I don't think. I don't believe so. They've had a tag team match a couple times, I think. But, uh... Never a singles match, but anyway, that's going to be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep you updated on that as well. But uh, yeah, ROH uh, looking promising going in the future, you know? Yeah. Uh, we were kind of disappointed that they treated um, Glory by Honor, and they're actually going to treat like, most of the house shows as like, TV tapings. We're kind of disappointed by that, but at the same time, we understand, you know? It's understandable. It's frustrating. Uh, I think that most of it falls on the shoulders that they're big shows they don't have for iPay-per-views anymore, and yeah. it's not their fault. I mean, yeah. we've seen what happens with iPay-per-views, and I don't, I wouldn't, I can't expect them to risk that. Yeah, but it's hurt them quite a bit. Yeah, but like, and again, but like, luckily, like their video on demand service is like so, like the turnoff that is so fast, which is be, nice, yeah. which is really helping, I think. Yeah. So hopefully they keep it up, you know. And back to iPay-per-views next year would be a very nice thing to see, but we're not holding our breath on that. And speaking of uh, videos on the ah, perfect, perfect transition. High five there. <laughs> no, that was horrible. High five. God. We'll fix it later. Yeah. Fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. We'll edit that. Yeah. Bullshit. We don't have any editing skills. Um, well, uh, I just checked WN Live as of today, um, November 1st, and now, just now, 
the Dragon Gate USA shows are back up, or at least the one I ordered, the Open the Ultimate Gate. Now, when did you order that show? I ordered that uh, about two weeks ago. I think maybe three. I think it was three. I think it was three. And I've been constantly emailing um, the help WN, of WN Live. I've been talking to a guy on Facebook who works for WN Live, and they've been, you know, giving me the fucking runaround about, like, oh, it's going to be taken care of. In fact, I was told Wednesday that it will absolutely be done by Thursday. It wasn't. I was, you know, and like, and apparently this has something to do, and this might be information that they don't want you to know about, but fuck it, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, um, they took time and effort. They, like, they knew, like, their film was out, but they wanted to take time to edit them and make them the quality they want the DVDs to be. That way they can switch them onto DVDs faster. Faster than what? A year and a half? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Gabe has t put on Twitter that, that all of the 2012 shows that you guys ordered last year will be available before the end of 2013 on DVD. Woohoo! Really, who cares? I know. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's a running joke. Yeah. It's a running joke. And just, so... I, it's just weird that they, they would be so... Slow about it. Yeah. about it. It's like, this would be, if, if this was ROH, they'd be having a fucking panic attack. They'd be getting this shit on, back online fast and as they can. The thing is, though, ROH fans would be having, would be throwing a Fit. Yeah, if nobody is, is talking about this. Like I'm like, but the thing is, that's because nobody watches nobody even live. Yeah, no one cares about DG yeah. USA anymore because yeah. they have just made themselves almost impossible to watch. Yeah. Um, well, as of right now, like I like to fish this hand on camera. Um, WN Live. I'm never gonna buy a fucking show from you again. If my buddy lets me borrow his account, I'll watch him there. But otherwise, I'm gonna be looking for him on the fucking internet, and I will be sharing that link with everyone. And by the way, if you guys want to watch the show, I'll, gi I'll give anyone that I know personally my password and account to watch Open the Ultimate Gate for free. No charge. So I'll probably like you, Trademark, Gold Fan, or all you guys. You guys can borrow my account if you want. Get a hold of me. I will give you my account for free so that you don't have to pay Gabe any money. This is what happened when you pissed me off. I don't know. Fucking shooting right here. Yeah, he's just going for it right now. I'm pissed. <laughs> I fucking ordered this show. Three weeks ago, we planned on watching it that night, and it was like, and like, it was like, I should check to make sure it's working, and it wasn't, and I was pissed, and so I'm, I'm fucking steaming. The only thing that really bothers me about this is like, Gabe gets on Twitter, and he will shit all over ROH and all these other promotions for having problems, technical problems, and then when his site goes to shit, he's, he's nowhere to be found. They kept that quiet. You they, can't find him. They kept that shit quiet. Like, come on, yeah. Dude. Give me a break uh, with your shit. Yeah, we still love you, Gabe, but you know you're stop you, with the, the <laughs> passive aggressive. Stop bullshit. working us. Yeah, stop really, working. We're not. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we got two more things to talk about. Which one is PWG's newest, latest show for this end of the year, which will be, I believe, the 25th and the 21st of December, which is going to be another All Star Weekend. They're doing two in a two in one year. Well. <sighs> They're spoiling us. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they are they are really are spoiling us. Uh, for night one, they've already announced Candice LeRae versus Adam Cole in a nine title match, which is going to be awesome. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, Candice LeRae is on a roll recently, and I'm, yeah. I'm really happy they brought her back. About a damn time. Um, and the other main event will be Kevin Steen and the Young Bucks taking on Ricochet, Rich Swan, and A.R. Fox. This is night one. This is night one. Yeah. So that is going to be fucking insane. Yeah, that should be a wild match. For night two, we have two dream matches happening. One is Dave Richards versus Ricochet. Holy that's fuck. That's going to be awesome. That is going to be insane. And that's a match I think a lot of people want to see. The only match I want to see Dave Richards in more, I think, would probably be him versus Tazawa. Yeah. Which, Peter G, bring, please bring back Tazawa oh, and Uha Nation. so much. Um, and the other match... The main event is a fucking dream match finally happening. An in the indie dream yeah. match. Now, oh. to be fair, the match has actually happened before in Evolve. But it was before these guys were... Yeah, really this big. is different. It will be the P2G world champion, Anna Cole, taking on Johnny Gargano. The ROH champ versus the Dragon Gate USA champion. In it's finally happened, This folks. is the first time ever. No, no, they've had the match before in Dragon Gate, or Evolve. No, the first time... Oh, yeah. A you're, you're, ROH champion. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. A this Gate is champion. going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. This is a fucking dream match. I mean, these two guys, like, they had a match a long time ago, but that was, like, before they really broke out and, and just were amazing. Mm -hmm. And these are two of the guys who I think be that are, like, the top of the independent oh, wrestling yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be insane. So absolutely buy this show. This is, like, I have, oh. I have, I can't wait for this. 
And the thing is, like, you know the rest of the show is going to be awesome, but this is what you want to <laughs> like, buy. They announced for. four matches, and we're, and we're already losing our shit. And, yeah, four matches for two shows. Yeah. I mean, oh, good God, I mean, P2G is just, they just, they spoil us. Yeah. And, yeah. We, and I, Kevin Steen has said it on DVD. He said, it, if I owned a wrestling company, I would fucking hate PWG. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's got to be the yeah, truth. Yeah, think about this, man. I Here's a little fun fact. I have bought every single PWG show, except for one, since Steen Wolf. Which was what month? 2011, of no, 2011 November. Yeah. I have, or no, October. I have bought every single show since then. I have actually, okay, I got a legal copy of Bola last year, 2012, night one, night two, just because I couldn't afford it at the time. And then I went back and bought the DVD just because I wanted to have it. So good, yeah. Yeah. That's how good P2G is. I will have a copy of the show. I'm like, you know what? I, they deserve my money. Yeah. So. They're, they are definitely number one in North America. P2G is the fucking greatest company in the world. If you do not watch yeah. Pro Wrestling Gorilla, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go watch it now. Right. I don't know what you're thinking if you oh don't my. watch this show. This, this company is the, f the greatest in the world. There's the only one that comes close to this is, is New Japan, Japan, which we gotta talk about right now. <laughs> Another perfect segue. Time for our actual. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a little better. Um, which is uh, the Young Bucks just finished up a tour there, or I believe they are finishing it up now. Mm -hmm. So they got to go over to uh, New Japan finally and be a part of the Bullet Club. They go Bullet Club. Okay, that's yeah, lame. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So congratulations to them. Uh, one of the matches included them and Carl Anderson taking on Okada and Gato and Jado. Is that the last name names? Uh, Jado and Gato. Gato, whatever. Yeah, so, and uh, I think it was Nick Jackson posted this on Twitter that, like, um, we just made a event at the, uh, uh, a show in New Japan, and three years ago we were in a dark match in Orlando. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that, awesome. That just goes to prove that town rises to the top in right. wrestling. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to the Young Bucks. Well, well deserved. And uh, I, I am not watching the matches yet. I'm looking forward to watching them eventually. And along with um, the next uh, show from New Japan, which is Power Stroke, I think is like next month sometime, or, or this month, I guess. I'm hoping to see a lot more bucks in New Japan. Yeah. We, we, we love more bang for our bucks. Uh, heck yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, that'll wrap it up for us here at New our, uh, Strong South Studios. I'm a guy got New Japan on the brain. I almost called this up New Japan. I wish we were in New Japan. Oh. We'd be a lot richer. All right, guys. Take care. See ya.